Hello, good evening. Thank you for being here. Let's see. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, thank you for being here. Eliu, Anna, Mercy, Maria, Jose, Alejandra, Claudia, Erasmo, Rodrigo, and Zulma. Okay, how are you? How was your day today? Tired. Tired. <laughs> you worked a lot. Yes. Okay. Too many calls. <laughs> Too many calls. I imagine that. Okay, very good. Uh, but no problem. Probably you can relax a little bit after working that much. Uh, remember that we have the 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 material. I'm going to share share it tomorrow, and we have here um section four. Right, I completed the section four. If you have questions, because I guess somebody asked me about that. Yes, I remember that I have a question related with the tag questions. Is I hate, I don't know, but the the sentence is like I hate, and I put do I, but it's wrong, mm -hmm. so I don't know. <laughs> yes, we're going to check right now. I guess Beatrice also is wrote. Can you help me solve section four point two? Knowledge check exercises four, five, six, and section four point four point five. Listening part exercise one, two, three. Okay, so we're going to check section four because it's good that you have um, been working on that. So we're going to check that. Okay, this is section four. This is um. The objective, right? This is the information, relative pronouns that we are going to check later. And these are the exercises. It says, rewrite the sentences with reduce relative clauses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. Anyone who dreams of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to do a lot of hard work. Okay, do you have any questions on any of these sentences? You need to reduce with relative clauses. This is 4.2. For example, in the first one, it says someone who hopes to be a chef should get the proper training. And the answer is someone hoping to be a chef should get the proper training. So in this case, we'll be hoping, right? Instead of who hopes, someone hoping. And the second one, anyone who wants to be an actor needs both talent and luck. It's anyone wanting to be an actor needs both talent and luck. So it's instead of who wants, it's wanting, right? A person who works as a comedian is always looking for new ways to make people laugh. Instead of who works, is working, right? A person working as a comedian is always looking for new ways to make people laugh. So that's the only thing that you need to change, right? In this one, for example, people who are clever enough People clever enough, right? So we omit who are people clever enough to get inside the mind of a criminal will make good detectives. And number five, anyone who dreams, anyone dreaming, right? Anyone dreaming of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to do a lot of hard work. Six, someone who is responsible, the same, right? Someone responsible for, right? We admit who is. And then we write the same, right? For a large staff has to be able to be creative with scheduling. Let's see if we have more responses. Yeah, I guess those are the only ones. Yes. So if you have any question about that or if you have any problem when you submit, 
the answers and let me know. But actually it's just to omit this one, who hopes, who wants, who works, who are clever, who dreams, who is responsible. We need to um, change it for uh, a relative clause. Questions about this? No, right. Okay, so this is 4.2. Now we have, this is uh, 4.3, the objective. This is creativity quiz. This is the listening, right? The listening. Okay, if you listen to it, uh, the first one is architect. The second one is small business owner. And number three is interior designer. So try to listen to it and check if those are your responses. And in this case, in the part number two, it says, listen again. So it's the same listening, the same one. And it says, does Samira S, Alex A, or Naomi do these things? Write only the first letter of each person, capital letter only. So it's only the capital letter of uh, each of them. So we who stay on top of, of, of trends? S, right, Samira, who answers the phones, who work long hours, who helps clients decide what looks best, who thinks about the competition, and who present ideas to clients. So it's just one letter. And then you need to submit. You need to submit the, the, um, the answers. In this one, you need to write just the occupation, right? Let's see. This is lesson six. Exploring possibilities. And then 4.8, non-defining relative clauses. And this one, you just need to choose. It says match the statements with the appropriate non-defining clauses. So you need to match each of these statements, right? I don't know if you have questions with this one. I guess this one is easier because you have the options here, right? Do you have questions with this, with this one? No? No. Okay. Okay, let's see the final exam. Let's see the final exam. I guess that that's the part where Ana Maria had problems. This is a listening, right? So what you have to do is just to listen and choose the option, right? And it will show you which one is incorrect if you chose the incorrect one. The same here, part two, right? So if you have any question, like, for example, if it doesn't accept true or false, right, or it doesn't accept A, B, or C, right, all of them are incorrect, teacher. So if you have these kind of problems, let me know so you, I can report it. Uh, this is complete sentences. This is the part B, complete sentences, instructions, complete the sentences with the passive of the verbs in parentheses. Just type in the verbs in its correct form. No capital letter or period is needed. So what you have to do here is just to complete the sentence. It says, in the future, more online courses are going to be taken by people with busy schedules. So we have take here, right? Take. So in this case, we use a uh, passive voice to talk about the future. I can shut down my computer until all my files had been downloaded. So actually it doesn't say here the tense. No les está pidiendo el tiempo. ¿Qué tiempo si es eh, presente perfecto o presente continuo? It, it's not asking that. It's just telling you to uh, write the, the passive, right? The passive voice. So you have to be careful with this one. For example, the second one is the present perfect, but it's in passive. Está en, pas en voz pasiva. This one is use. These days, chat rooms are being used. So in this one is present continuous, but it's passive voice, right? Chat rooms are being used by universities to house student discussions. So you have to be careful. Offer. Sam has been offered, right? So this is present perfect, but passive voice. So it's using only present perfect and uh, present continuous in passive voice. Recycle. When I buy a new laptop, my old one is going to be recycled. So this is present continuous in passive voice. Since blogging software became available, millions of blogs create, have been created, right? Have been created. So that is present perfect with passive voice. 
passive voice is kind of difficult, but we are going to cover it really soon. And we are going to practice with these tenses specifically. And also tag questions. This one is easier because it's optional, right? Do you have a, any of those? Any option is, one is correct and the other one is incorrect. So try to complete that. This is a reading, the same. And I think that's it. Yes. And in the tag question, I guess it was in section three. So we are going to, to check tag questions in this week, I believe, hopefully. Tag questions, I guess it's um, this one right now. No, it's not this one. This is the future with passive. Hello, Elio, how are you? How have you been feeling? Okay, let me see here. No, it's the same one. Tag questions, tag questions. Is the listening? This is optional. Do you remember where was the tag question part? <laughs> no. No. Right. No, but no worries. Uh, maybe the. But next did you have week... it correct? Yes, because I try with don't I or don't you because don't you, you told me mm -hmm. and no, it's, it's incorrect and I try with do don't I you. or don't I but no, it's mm -hmm. incorrect. It's incorrect? Yeah. Mm, that's weird. <laughs> don't you? Maybe, maybe teacher is the final exam. So if you want, we can see that in the next the final exam i don't remember to be honest yes because i was looking the final exam and okay. showing this is the final exam the the last one right yeah yes it's this oh, one is yes that's part yes i hate getting oh, spams but, don't you but but why don't you i i why uh -huh. it's like you're talking to someone else like for example i don't uh, like i don't like mondays right or i i or i hate mondays don't you right don't you i'm talking to you right mm -hmm. so that's why we are going to check okay. that okay. yeah we're going to uh, check that question but it's done you that is the correct one okay okay perfect thank you you're welcome hopefully it's great that we we found the answer so we are going to yeah. check yeah we are going to check right now um the material from yesterday right let's see here okay yesterday we were talking about information overload because the objective for this one this class was just to practice use internet terms and we watch some of the internet terms like mouse speaker flash drive outlet right this is like very technical um, uh, vocabulary. So um, yesterday you read this part. Now we are going to listen and you will be able to have this reading as a practice, right? In case that you want to practice, you want to better your pronunciation. Si ustedes quieren mejorar su pronunciación, you can use this way, right? You can uh, listen first and then read. So that will be uh, like a technique. Let's see if I can find it here, okay. It's minutes 14, I guess. Yes, 14, 15. The words. Music, the internet. So no, I wouldn't do it. Not even if you were offered money? Uh, okay, can you hear? It would have to be a huge amount of money. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're going to listen to the reading. I guess it's the same one. So <laughs> no, we'll I'm be able to check the pronunciation. 
Definitely not going to do it. <laughs> no, shame on you. <laughs> Information overload. If you type the words information overload into Google, you will immediately get an information overload. More than 7 million hits in 0.05 seconds. Some of this information is interesting. For example, you learn that the phrase information overload was first used in 1970, actually before the internet was invented. But much of the information is not relevant or useful. Obscure companies and even more obscure bloggers. Information overload is one of the biggest irritations in modern life. There are news and sports websites to watch, emails that need to be answered, people who want to chat to you online, and back in the real world, friends, family and colleagues who also have things to tell you. At work, Information overload is also causing problems. A recent survey has shown that many company managers believe that it has made their jobs less satisfying and has even affected their personal relationships outside work. Some of them also think that it is bad for their health. Clearly, there is a problem. It is not only the increase in the quantity of information, it is also the fact that it is everywhere not just in the home and in the workplace. Many people today do not go anywhere without their smartphones. There is no escape from the Internet. Scientists have highlighted three big worries. Firstly, information overload can make people feel anxious. There is too much to do and not enough time to do it. People end up multitasking, which can make them even more stressed. Secondly, information overload can make people less creative. Research shows that people are more likely to be creative if they are allowed to focus on one thing for some time, without interruptions. Thirdly, information overload can make people less productive. People who multitask take much longer and make many more mistakes than people who do the same tasks one after another. What can be done about information overload? One solution is technological. There is now a computer program or app you can install called Freedom, which disconnects you from the web at preset times. The second solution involves willpower. Switch off your mobile phone and the internet from time to time. The manager of an IT company puts thinking time into his schedule when all his electronic devices are switched off so that he isn't disturbed. This might sound like common sense, but nowadays, although we have more information than ever before, we do not always have enough common sense. Okay, very good. So now we know how to pronounce it, right? Um, like this is like a British accent, but you should know how to pronounce uh, every word. I don't know if you have questions about this, like any questions about any word that probably yesterday you missed or any meaning or pronunciation. No? Okay. So I think that everything is clear, right? Let's see who is the last one. Diego, Anthony, are you there? Diego, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. What do you understand? What do you understand about information overload? Like, what is the main idea of this uh, article? Uh, eh, sorry, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> eh, 
a lot of information. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What is the main idea? Information yeah. overload, yes. What is like the main idea or what was like, what do you under, understand about the article? Like everything that, that was explained about internet and information overload and about multitasking. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments? Um, presently, uh, many information is managed. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the big empress, uh, uh, for you, information uh, like, like, like is... Google, uh huh, Google, and what else? For you, information overload is positive or negative? Uh, Negative. Negative. Why? Negative. Because it's too much information and too many things that we have to do maybe at the same time. And sometimes we are over over overwhelmed mm -hmm. of exactly. all these things that we have to do, email, chat talking to many um, people, uh, maybe receiving different kind of emails or spam emails. So it's too much information that we have to manage. Yes, well, exactly. That, that is the thing that I understood, to be honest. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's like multitasking, right? That you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to answer a phone call. Yes, uh, Diego, right. Uh, do you have an opinion about this? I guess you were raising your hand or it was... Uh, yeah, the ago. same. The same. Exactly, exactly. And teacher was me. And I only mentioned that the problem with the, or the neg negative part of this is many of the information don't be necessarily useful. Maybe there is some information that it doesn't through and this can make some problems. That's the negative part. Yes, a lot of information is not very important, right? It's like, it's, uh, you don't need it, right? To live or to probably get a job or to get money. It is just like distracting you from important things. Very good. And do you have any other uh, any other other comment? Somebody else? Like for example, do you think do you feel overwhelmed by using the telephone all the time, or do you disconnect yourself on weekends? Any other comment? Well, I never answer any call, any mm, text message, any WhatsApp message uh, after 8 p.m. <laughs> okay, so after 8 p.m., you're, you're offline for everybody. Yes, well, I'm making an exception mm -hmm. with this class. <laughs> yes. But to be honest, uh, I don't want anybody call me or text me after 8 p.m. Just if it's an, an emergency. Okay, and your friends, do they know that? Yes. Yes, <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. yes. It is important to, to let them run, right, to put limits, right? If you uh, want to rest and you're like, too, it's too much for you because you're watching on the screen all the time and you're watching the screen when you're on uh, your and you're uh, at home, right? Yes, probably can be too much sometimes. Yes, Very. they laugh at me because they always say, 
oh no she's she's sleeping at this moment the the old woman um, <laughs> uh, yes i am la viejita yo soy la viejita, <laughs> la viejita. Uh, yeah. yes and and thing like that but i prefer rest <laughs> yes it's good it's important to rest it's important it's healthy and some you know your limits right everybody's different and sometimes it's too much right it's, it's like a lot of information and a lot of things that we have to do with te technology nowadays very good very good and one thing that i want to mention about this actually it's not about the topic but actually it's about the pronunciation if you notice when uh, we were listening to the audio uh schedule was uh pronounced differently right she said schedule right because it's british so that's okay because in, in england or in uh, some places they say it's schedule and that's okay in american english they say schedule right but uh, that was something that you can notice if you listen to it again and you start reading it but it's okay yeah no. i also noticed that there are other words mm -hmm. like turn off she said switch off i think switch off and also uh, firstly secondly secondly thirdly. exactly it's because yeah. it's it's british right it's british english so very good exactly they uh, they changed some of the words but uh, they are very similar switch off turn off it's like the same very good now let's see i think that we have a listening also but we're going to leave this for the end and this is an exercise right for listening for you to improve your listening because that's something that you mentioned at the beginning so it's also related to electronics and everything, right? Uh, but we're going to check right now the grammar. Uh, this is in section three. By the end of this class, participants will learn, practice, and use passive of the present continuous, present perfect, and the future. So that's what you were checking in section four, right? In section in the in, in the final exam. This is the information that you can find in um, the platform, right? In the video they show you this passive or present continuous, present perfect future, right? It says use the passive tenses for actions where the emphasis is on the object of the action. So probably you have studied the passive already and you already know this, right? That the important thing is who receives the action, not the doer of the action. It says use the passive of the present continuous for ongoing actions. It's the same, right? Present continuous is for things that are happening at the same uh, uh, right now. For example, an increasing number of degrees are being offered online. So that's something that's happening right now. The only difference is that it's impassive, right? Nobody knows who, who is offering this um, uh, degrees, right? Use the passive of the present perfect for recently completed actions. The same, right? It's the same as present perfect. More music has been downloaded this year than ever before. So that's something that it's already finished, right? It's a complete action. And we can use also will plus passive or be going to plus passive for actions that will begin in the future. More computers will be infected by viruses. More healthcare sites are going to be used by people from home. So this is telling you that it's the same, something that will begin in the future, right? And it's impassive, right? That's it. I don't know if you have questions about the passive voice. Preguntas de la voz pasiva. If you, it's kind of confusing or when do I use it or how do I use it? No questions? Okay, let's see. Uh, Gen Z, are you there? Gen Z, can you hear me? Okay, let's see, Nady, Nady Evis Mendes, can you hear me? No response, okay, let's see, Porfirio, can you hear me? 
Yeah, coach. Okay, yes. Okay, can you read uh, the presentation, please? It is possible for you to read right now? Hello? I can read it. Okay, thank you. you go ahead, okay. please. <laughs> it is not known or it is not important to know who has performed the action. Yes, that is really important. But that's this, that's what uh, what I was saying, right? Passive voice. It is not known. Sometimes we don't know who is the doer of the action, or it is not important, right? That is something uh, that we can omit, but uh, we can add it if you want to buy, right? For example, um, I read a book. A book was read by me, right? So that's how we can. Um, add the, the doer of the action to the sentence, but it's not important. Right? That's the reason why it goes at the end. It says it is only used when it is important to know who performed the action. If we need to know it, we can add it, or, but we don't have to do it, right? For example, the song was sung. The song was sung by my favorite singer. So my by my favorite singer is the doer of the action, but in this case, it's not that important. You can see also this information in the presentation. It says transitive verbs. Transitive verbs can be used in passive. For, for example, happen, seem, sleep, etc. Cannot be used in the passive form. So in transitive verbs. Remember that in transitive, ver in transitive verbs cannot be used in the passive voice, right? For example, um, Julia goes to the school, right? So how can we transform that into passive? We can do it grammatically, yes, but it doesn't make sense, right? So the school was um, or is gone by Julia? No, right? So that those are intransitive verbs. They don't have an object. And transitive verbs, they do have objects. And the object is the important part in the passive voice because the object will be will become the subject. And the subject will become the object, like they a flip, right? Let's say. So that's why it's important to know this. Now, this is a reading. Let me see here if I have some extra information. Yes, because we just have, you see, it the time goes by really fast. So let's see. Um, Jose Jovito, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, can you read just the, the sentences here, just to check? The, the one in the white table, the white square. Okay, uh, number one, a lot of automobiles are short on location. Our car is being repaired today. Any any buy has been stolen. The director driver went to the movies. He was behind me. You pick up, pick up, pick it up. At the airport, bar one off our stuff. Mm -hmm. This will have to be paid tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, Baba Begui was directed by Christopher Nolan. Very good. Thank you. All of these sentences, um, all of those are in passive, right? So it says, we often use the passive when it's not said, known, or important who does the action, right? Or when Andy's, Andy's bike has been stolen, who stole the bike? We don't know, right? So when we don't know who is the doer of the action, we use it. And also, if you want to say who did the action, use by, right? We already know that. We can often say things in two ways, in the active or in the passive, right? For example, Batman was uh, directed by Christopher Nolan or Christopher Nolan directed Batman Begins in 2005. So it can be active or passive. Normally we use passive voice 
in uh, books or texts that is that they are very like um, educational, for example, um, in books related with mathematics or science, or I don't know, something like something that is like educational, right? For example, if you have to write your thesis, you are going to use a lot of passive voice. So, and we can use it in negative also, right? It says we form negative, uh, let's see here, we form negatives and questions in the same way as in active sentences. So it's the same. Some movies are in shot on location. Is your car being repaired today? So these sentences are passive, right? We can use questions and negative sentences. And it says, we, also, we often use the passive to talk about processes. For example, scientific processes and in, uh, informal writing, such as newspaper reports. As you can see in this writing, it's more common. We don't speak like that normally, right? Like in passive, like um, your house wa was visited by me right now. I visited your house, right? I visited your house yesterday. So normally we don't use this in on a daily basis. Uh, for example, the water is heated to 100 degrees, right? Or many buildings in the city have been damaged by the earthquake. So you can uh, see this kind of sentences in newspapers or in formal writing. Questions about passive voice? No questions? Okay. Just to make sure, um, and before finishing uh, the class with the listening, uh, we have some... We have a, a homework, right? Do you like movies? Yes, no. What is the last movie that you watched? Mm. Ant-Man. Ant-Man? <laughs> okay, very good. Did you like it or no? No, to be honest, I just... Uh, was with my husband <laughs> because and, he loves uh, Marvel and things like loves that. Her. And you don't you don't love Marvel? You like some of the movies? Mm -hmm. No, I don't like it. I well, I prefer Mario Kart, for example, or comedy or romantic movies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, there are different genres for everybody. Very yeah. good. Uh, anybody else who was the last or what is your favorite movie or what was the last movie that you watched? Anybody else? Mercy or Porfirio or Rodrigo or Diego? Oh, well, in my case, I don't remember. I don't see a lot of You don't watch movies? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. It, yeah exactly. Sometimes. Yeah. What what is your favorite movie, Mercy? Oh, well, the last that I saw, it's like a documentary mm -hmm. that took place in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Because uh some people I don't know how to say it was called. I don't know if mm -hmm. on on uh how do you say cueva? Cave. Yeah, they were on a cave and it started to raining there. Oh, it was from the, the football team, the soccer team? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, ah, uh, yes. There is a movie also about that. I watched it and it's interesting. It was very interesting. Yes. Yeah, and that it was, was interesting. It made me cry. <laughs> Yes, exactly, because it's based on, on real events, right? It's it's real, the story. Very good. So you can, yeah. uh, you, you have watched different movies. Uh, everybody, I think that I have watched at least one. Uh, so we are going to use the, the passive voice to talk about movies, right? We have some examples here, like Catch Me If You Can, War Horse, Indiana Jones, uh, E.T., Minority Report. So we have different things and we're going to use movies to talk about um, uh, to talk about them and to talk about uh, the passive, right? So for example, this is my favorite film, right? This is an example, right? 
And we are going to use um, passive to talk about the movie. So we are going to check it right now. I don't know if someone can read the first paragraph, voluntario, para leer el primer párrafo, volunteer. Me, teacher. Okay, Sulma, read the first paragraph, please. Okay, the Spider-Man movies based, are based on the Marvel comic character Spider-Man, who is the alter ego of mm -hmm. Peter Parker, a photographer who works for a local news newspapers, mm -hmm. the Daily Bugle. The Daily Bugle, exactly. The Daily Bugle. In this case, as you can see in the first sentence, we have two options, right? We have active movies base or are base, right? So we are going to choose one of those and you will let me know uh, which is the best option. So for example, in the first one, we already know, right? Are base, right? Spider-Man movies are based on the Marvel comic char character Spider-Man. Now let's read the second one. Who wants to read the second one? Okay, when he's young, some important documents steal or are stolen from Peter's home and his parents then mis mysteriously mm -hmm. disappear or are disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's continue? Yes, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, Peter sends or is sent to live with his aunt and uncle. Here he starts a new school, a new life, and becomes interested in science. Very good. So, uh, thank you. Let's see. Uh, when he is young, sorry. When he is young, some important documents are stolen are or stolen. St are stolen, right? Are stolen. Mm -hmm. And then he says his parents then mysteriously disappear or are disappeared. Mysteriously disappear. Disappear, disappear exactly. Disappear. Peter sends or Peter is sent to live with his aunt. Is Peter is sent, Peter es enviado, ¿verdad? To live with his aunt and uncle. Very good. Very, you see, so sometimes it makes sense to use the passive and sometimes the active. It's okay, right? Let's see the third paragraph. Another volunteer, please. El tercer párrafo, otro voluntario. Integer. Okay, go ahead, please, Jose. Okay, one day he's in the school laboratory doing some experiment and he dies and he dies by Herica's modified spider. From that moment, he was the same uh, abilities as a spider. During the movies, they fly and um, flow against criminals and fall. He's falling in love with his placement. You went Stacy. Exactly. Went Stacy. Very good. Perfect. So the first option, bites is beaten. This it says school laboratory doing some experiments and he bites or he is beaten by genetically modified spider. What is the best option? He bites. He's beaten. He is beaten, él es mordido, right? He is beaten by a modified spider, very good. The next one, during the movies, he fights or he is fought against criminals? He fights. fights. He fights, perfect. And falls or is falling in love with his classmate? False, exactly. The first one was uh, active, right? So the second one will be active, right? It's part of the, uh, it's a compound sentence. Very good. Then the last one, the last one. Who wants to read the last one, the last paragraph? Me, teacher. Okay, Jose, go ahead, please. 
Okay, the special effects for the late Spider-Man movie made or were made with a special 3D camera. The fantastic soundtrack was partly written by the British group Coldplay and thousands of copies of the track How About or Have Been Bought all over the world. Very good, perfect. So now we, that we have read the last one, let's see what is the best option. It says, uh, for the latest Spider-Man movie made or um, the special effects made or were made with a special 3D camera? Were made. Were made, exactly. Then it says written Coldplay. Uh, it says British group Coldplay and thousands of copies of the track have bought or have been bought. Thousands of copies of the track have bought or have been bought all over the world. What is the best option? Have been bought? Exactly, have been bought. Why? Because it says a thousand of copies have been bought, right? By people, right? By many people all over the world, but uh, people is not mentioned there because probably it's not important. We already know that people are buying these copies, right? So very good. Perfect. So this is the way that we are going to talk about movies tomorrow. We're going to have like, you don't have to read all of this. You just need to write one paragraph and at least write one sentence or two sentences in passive, right? If you want to practice. And I think that we still have 10 minutes. Probably we can complete the the listening, right? I will write the homework on in the WhatsApp group for you to have it there and in the example also. So I, I will leave it there. And to, tomorrow is Friday, right? Tomorrow, no, tomorrow is Thursday, sorry. I'm kind of lost right now, so yes. So we'll have classes, okay, no problem. And also in Fridays. So uh, we have here this uh, book, right? And it says, look at the book cover. And we're going to review the information. What do you think the book is about? How do you think the three teenagers feel? So this is a book, the, the name of the book is The Winter of Our Disconnect. Susan Mosher is the writer. And this is related to um, the thing that we were talking at the beginning of the class, right? Information overload. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed with a lot of information. And uh, this is some of the information about the book, right? It says, when Susan Mosher first announced her intention to pull the plug on her family's entire collection of electronic gadgets for six months, her three kids didn't react at all. Says Mosher, looking back, I can't understand why they didn't hear me. So, um, like, probably the books is about, like, how she tries to disconnect all of their kids uh, and remove all of the gadgets, right? So we're going to listen at least part one, al menos la parte uno, para que podamos practicar. We're going to respond these sentences. Why did Susan Mosher decide to do the experiment? Was it just her children who were spending too much time using technology? Who are digital immigrants and digital natives? What gadgets would did Susan Mushar family have to switch off? Where? What were they allowed to use? How did they, how did she get the children to agree to the experiment? So she did this experiment. At least we are going to, to listen to the first part. No problem. And I have it here. Let's see. 5.10. For 7.30. Okay. 5.19. Part 1. And now it's time for our book of the week, which is The Winter of Our Disconnect by Susan Moshart. Jeremy, to start with, 
It's a good title, isn't it? Yes, amazing. And it was a fascinating experiment and a good read. Tell us about it. Well, Susan Moshart is a journalist who's raising three teenage children. She decided to do the experiment after reaching a point where she felt that the whole family, especially her children, were all living in their own little worlds, with headphones on, plugged into their laptops or their iPods or their smartphones, and that they weren't relating to the other people in the family. So, it wasn't just her children who were permanently plugged into an electrical device. Well, she admits that she herself was addicted to her phone and to her iPod and her laptop and that she was constantly reading news sites and Googling information. But it was really her children who were totally dependent on new technology. In the book, she makes the interesting distinction between digital immigrants and digital natives. What does that mean? She describes herself as a digital immigrant. That's to say, someone who didn't grow up with digital technology, which is really anyone who was born before 1980. Her children are digital natives, which means that they were born after computers and the Internet were already part of life. Well, that's me then. Yes. Well, the main difference, she says, is that digital immigrants use the technology to find information or to listen to music, but digital natives live and breathe the technology. So for them, living without it is like living without water, without electricity, in the Dark Ages. What were the rules of the experiment? The family had to live for six months without using any electrical gadgets in the house with a screen. So no smartphones, no TVs, no laptops or computers, no video consoles, and no iPods. They were allowed to use technology at school or at friends' houses or in Internet cafes, and they were allowed to use landline phones. But everything else was switched off for the whole six months. Six months? How on earth did she get the children to agree? She bribed them. She told them that she was going to write a book about the experiment and that they would share in any profits that she made from the book. Wow, that was very smart of her. 5.20 Part 2 So, what were the results? Was it a positive experience? At the end... So, we're going to uh, answer these questions. Uh, I don't know if you want me to play it again, or I think it's enough, right? Did you answer the questions? No? Yes. Do you want to listen to it again? Yes. Yes. Okay. I will show you the questions now, and I will play it a last time. Uh, I know it's kind of complicated. Are you able to see the subtitles? Pueden ver los subtítulos? Yes. And now okay. it's time for our book of the week, which is The Winter of Our Disconnect by Susan Moshart. Jeremy, to start with, it's a good title, isn't it? Yes, amazing. And it was a fascinating experiment and a good read. Tell us about it. Well, Susan Moshart is a journalist who's raising three teenage children. She decided to do the experiment after reaching a point where she felt that the whole family, especially her children, were all living in their own little worlds, with headphones on, plugged into their laptops or their iPods or their smartphones, and that they weren't relating to the other people in the family. So, it wasn't just her children who were permanently plugged into an electrical device. Well, she admits that she herself was addicted to her phone and to her iPod and her laptop and that she was constantly reading news sites and Googling information. But it was really her children who were totally dependent on new technology. In the book, she makes the interesting distinction between digital immigrants and digital natives. What does that mean? She describes herself as a digital immigrant. That's to say, someone who didn't grow up with digital technology, which is really anyone who was born before 1980. Her children are digital natives, which means that they were born after computers and the Internet were already part of life. 
Well, that's me then. Yes. Well, the main difference, she says, is that digital immigrants use the technology to find information or to listen to music, but digital natives live and breathe the technology. So for them, living without it is like living without water, without electricity, in the Dark Ages. What were the rules of the experiment? The family had to live for six months without using any electrical gadgets in the house with a screen. So no smartphones, no TVs, no laptops or computers, no video consoles, and no iPods. They were allowed to use technology at school or at friends' houses or in internet cafes, and they were allowed to use landline phones. But everything else was switched off for the whole six months. Six months? How on earth did she get the children to agree? She bribed them. She told them that she was going to write a book about the experiment and that they would share in any profits that she made from the book. Wow, that was very smart of her. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to answer the questions, okay? Now, question one, why did Susan Mosher decide to do the experiment? Who has the answer or any idea? Why did she decide to do the, the, this experiment to disconnect their children from technology? No? Nobody? Me, I don't know if I'm correct, but um, I heard that uh, the whole family is the, like the smartphones, iPad, and some of them were independent with this technology. And so she wanted to, I think, switch off this technology to check uh, how they react with this. Exactly right. They were using a lot of technology and also um the children's right that's why that's what she saw right that's why she decided to do the experiment it says was it just her children who were spending too much time using technology yes or no was it just the children or also her or also her. her yeah she was also a kind of addictive right to uh uh, to technology. Who are digital immigrants and who are digital natives? What is the difference? The digital immigrant is the people that didn't grow up with the computer or iPhone. Well, that kind of devices, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the other ones are the the generation that grew up after the computer or those kind of devices uh, appear. Exactly, very good. They were born with technology already. It's essential for them, right, for digital natives. Very good. What gadgets did Susan Mosher families have to switch off? What devices? Phones? Cell phones, phones uh -huh. TV, cell phones. No iPad, no Different. computer, no TV. <laughs> yeah, imagine that, right? No iPad, no computer, nothing. What were they allowed to use? At school. At school. Uh, cafe. Were they able to phone use phone. landlines, like phone lines? Yes. Yes, right, landlines, yes. And how did she get the children to agree to the experiment? Because she said that she will uh, write a book and will share the profits with her children. <laughs> yes, exactly. She bribed them, right? She said that she was going to share the the earnings of the book. She was going to read a. Uh, uh, she was going to write a book. What is the meaning of bribe? B R I B E. Bribe. 
What is the meaning of that? Bribe or bribing. Is soborno, right? Sobornar, bribe. I'm bribing you. Stan, so, te estoy sobornando. I am bribing you, okay? So here we have the, the, the answers. Actually, all of you were correct, all of your answers. Um, so very good. We did very good with this first part of the listening. Uh, hopefully, we are going to listen the second part tomorrow, probably. Uh, and if don't, um, we are going to have more vocabulary. We are going to have more exercises with te technology. And remember, tomorrow's uh, homework, right? Write about your favorite movie or the last movie that you watch. What do I have to use? English and the passive voice. Try to use the passive voice, right? Actually, we don't have like uh, like structures right now because this is just like a review. But if you have questions about the passive voice or if you don't know how to write or if you want to check if your paragraph is correct, let me know in, in the group, right? And I will try to check it or to help, try to help you, right? So tomorrow you need to write about your favorite movie. Just a short paragraph, corto, un párrafo corto. Use the passive voice. Do you have any questions, preguntas? No. no questions? Okay, perfect. So we will see you tomorrow. Have a nice evening and take care, okay? Thank you for take being care. here. Yes, I I am going to listen the class in the platform because I, I didn't receive full, all, all the class. Okay, perfect. I guess that around 10 or 10.30 will be uploaded already. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice thank evening. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Bye. Thank you. Bye.